good afternoon. My name is uh, Ursula Stachewicz. I'm from the AGH University of Science and Technology. I am a material scientist and I'm going to talk about the imaging of cell interaction with nanofibers. Um, so nanofibers are one of the commonly used um, features for the tissue regeneration. There's a, one example of the uh, product that is called, it's a bandage for the um, wound healing and slow drug release that's used for tissue engineering and drug delivery. Uh, another example where nanofibers are used are multi-well plates for high throughput cell culture for the cancer research or any stem cell research for regenerative medicine. And one of the commercially available products containing nanofibers is um, it's containing polyurethane and it's for the vascular graft for hemodialysis uh, patients. So to produce um, nanofibers, we use electrospinning process. It's a process where we have a polymer solution and we have polymer solution, we push it through the nozzle where we apply high voltage and due to the electrostatic forces, we have formation of the cone, jet, and the spinning region. And during the spinning region, there is a stretching of the jet. So this stretching, uh, during the stretching, the solvent is evaporating and what you produce, you produce solid nanofibers. So you can produce different arrangements of your nanofibers. This is example of the random nanofibers, no control of the uh, fiber direction, but you can also align them in the one direction. So you can control also the spacing between those nanofibers in different way you collect them. Um, Electrospinning is also a um, um, high throughput method, so it's not only single nozzle, but there is also a method that's called nozzle-less electrospinning, where you have actually the cylinder and that it's dipped in the polymer solution, and then you collect your uh, nanofibers on the top electrode collector over here. So you can produce a lot. Um, so now I would like to show you the method we use to characterize those nanofibers and uh, we use the microscopy technique which is combination of uh, scanning electron microscopy and focus ion beam. Uh, why do we want to do that? We want to actually see the 3D structure of our nanofibers. So we want to see not only the top surface and how the cell interact with the top surface, but how they interact into the whole network of our nanofibers. So we have combination of scanning electron microscopy and focus ion beam. So we turn our sample, so it's um, perpendicular to the focus ion beam, which we use to cut the sample, so we destroy the sample. But during the cutting, we do imaging with scanning electron microscopy. Okay, so focus ion beam, as I said, is used for cutting, so we use um, Ion, uh, gallium ions, and they bombard the surface. When they bombard the surface, they remove the, uh, the material, so we use our polymer nanofibers, and then we can create the open space. So we can see how the whole structure of nanofibers looks inside, inside. So now we want to use this technique to see how the cells interact with the whole network of uh, nanofibers this way. So um, we also can do this uh, in the cryo environment. So this is example of uh, nanofibers frozen with water. So we do slicing. So you see on the cross section, the dark spots, they are cross section of the fibers that we can use for the whole reconstruction. So what we do, we collect slicing, slices. So we do kind of slice and view technique. And then from these slices, we do reconstruction of the whole network. So what you can see over here, this is the reconstruction of the only nanofibers network where we can calculate the porosity, real porosity of um, the nanofiber network. So the porosity of the scaffolds are around 80 to 90%. So they are very porous, but the thing is the pore size is quite small. So the whole volume uh, that we have um, analyzed here is by 10 by 20 by 6 uh, microns. So we can do the whole reconstruction, calculate the average pore size. 
And now as a next step, we want to use our nanofibers for the cell culture. So we can simply deposit our nanofiber directly on the glass slide and use this glass slide for um, cell seeding. So in this example, we use uh, uh, the osteoblast cells and um, as a standard method for uh, um, uh, for uh, scanning electron microscopy, we dry the sample, uh, we fixate them, then we dehydrate the whole sample. Uh, so here you can see a few images of some uh, cell proliferation from the scanning electron microscopy. So this is example of uh, random fibers, so not organized, but you can see our, the, the osteoblast really nicely integrate. And they like to follow the direction of the fibers. So they use the philopodia to grow into the whole network of our nanofibers. Um, as I mentioned, you can align your fibers. So, um, so you can actually get them direct um, in the one direction. And then what we see, we see the cells actually follow the direction of fibers. So they are really nicely elongated comparing to the random fibers. So you can also see from the scanning electron microscopy some uh, features like this philopodia like they interconnect between the fibers. But in case of the random fibers, actually they grow inside the network. Even they are bigger than the pores, but they nicely grow inside. And then you can see actually they follow all this philopodia, go, they go really down into the whole network of fibers. So now uh, we use, as I mentioned, uh, the combination of scanning electron microscopy and focus ion beam. So here you can see the cell and we do slicing. So you see we can, we see clear slicing of our cell in fibers. So we collect those slices. So here is another example of a cell on top and the cross section of our fibers. So we collect the slices. We can actually automate the process and we can select uh, due to the staining, what is the cell, what is the fiber. And then we can create the 3D reconstruction of the whole volume of our cell. So cell is green and the rod points are uh, fibers. So with this image, actually, we can see how um, the cell is integrated with the whole network of uh, fibers. And we see that there is a um, kind of philopodia-like feature, so it's growing inside the, our network, but we also see that it's nicely coherent, uh, there are coherent interfaces between the fibers and the cell itself. So it's integrating with the whole scaffold. And we can also put some numbers behind the nice 3D images of the cells and nanofibers. So we can quantify the data by calculating the volume occupied by the sample. So for example, in this case, we have, we're going deep to 10 microns, but we see the cell actually goes up to around um, five, six uh, microns uh, deep. And the rest, actually, this is the, uh, the part of the fibers that volume occupied is more or less uh, similar in the middle. So we have done the same for the aligned fibers, and actually we can see a huge difference. So when we align fibers, we actually decrease the spacing between the fibers. And we see there is only formation of the cell on the top layer of our uh, nanofiber scaffolds. And when you see carefully, we see that actually cell, it's not going deeply into the uh, whole network. We see uh, still there is a philopodia formation and there are still coherent interfaces, but it's not integrating uh, with the whole scaffold inside. So we can control the direction of the growing with the direction of the fiber, but actually it's not growing inside the network. So with the volume occupied, we can calculate actually how deep it goes into the network and it goes out to the uh, two or three microns in the Z direction, so I mean deep into the uh, scaffold. And this actually brings me to the summary of my short presentation. So I wanted to show you that we can visualize at the nanoscale how cell integrate with uh, nano features. And this is the sectioning allows us to calculate the porosity of the whole structure and how um, the uh, cell is really integrating with the philopodia, which the sizes are below one micron, even tens of nanometers. 
And this um, whole thing also shows the coherent interfaces between the cells and the nanofibers, the scaffolds we really produce. Um, that I think the method also is a kind of opening a lot of um, question about the new designs of the materials and how we can use uh, new materials in the tissue engineering for the cell uh, scaffold integrations. And thank you for your attention. Uh, so it goes actually with this one, actually shows on the surface. But I, I think in the, another example that I show, that one, actually it's going to the half of the scaffold, so around six microns deep. But I have also another example so in preparation still it's work, but it's going up to 20 microns down. So actually you can, I think, control and with this method can verify how deeply cells grow. And even um, there are a lot of disadvantages, people say, of using nanofibers at tissue scaffold due to the small pore size. I think the cells still really well integrate into. And maybe there is another mechanism that really cells can actually move those fibers and still get in inside the whole network. So that's what we are actually writing after to answer. Um, so I think for the, the generally people say around 100, 200 microns at least the pore size so you can really get the whole cells integrated into the network. But this is generally for the tissue engineering scaffolds. I think with this kind of scaffolds you don't need such a, a huge um, a pore size because the material is flexible. So it means it can move around and I think cells they apply some forces so actually they can move those fibers around and still get inside. So I don't know the answer. That's what I. Uh, what would be the perfect size for for this scaffold? Inside, yeah, that's the whole idea I thought about the tissue engineering that people want to get the as much cells into inside so the for whole kind of bone replacement or anything like that they can actually apply the whole scaffold already with cells inside, yeah. That's what I had also always in mind whenever I thought about uh, yeah, tissue engineering application. Yeah. And I got way to measure with so the way to measure is really what the pore size, what's the optimal pore size should I do? Like you got a collagen scaffold, do you use a collagen yeah. scaffold? Yeah. You probably ask yourself why the pore size is so big or why the pore size yeah. is so small. So yeah. By the way, collagen you can make any pore size you want. Even more with Phoenix technology. So the the question everybody asking here, what is the optimal pore size? Uh, actually, I'm more interested in the mechanism how cell integrate with those nanofibers than really designing the pore size. Actually, I want to know the answer first. If cells really can integrate with such a way we produce the sample, and they can. And now my question is to understand why they really integrate, even the pore size is not the one that everyone suggests. <laughs> 